Hey guys, even here, and day after day, Arnold Classic becomes more and more exciting, so we have another awesome addition of Justin Luis Rodriguez, who officially confirmed his attendance at this show, so in 12 weeks, we're gonna see a rematch between him and Nick Walker. But is it really gonna be a rematch between these two guys? I mean, the last time they competed, everybody else was simply behind both of them, quite a bit behind. And in this show, there is a lot of great bodybuilders, so there is a big chance that both of these guys are not gonna be in the same callout. If you ask me, Nick is gonna make the first callout and Justin is probably gonna be in the second one. But here in last year's Chicago Pro, Nick Walker was behind Justin Rodriguez. Justin actually was able to beat Nick, but that was before Nick grew his hair. That was before Nick really made a lot of progress and he was a different bodybuilder this year. But there is another thing to be considered. About a week ago, Justin posted his new physique update and he was 305 pounds. 305 pounds at this conditioning. And another factor is that he has been writing about his posts about himself, about bodybuilding really passionately lately, so it seems like he's very much driven and he wants to improve, so he probably took maximum advantage of his post-show rebound, uh, because that is the time when your body absorbs everything like a sponge, as they say, so he probably took the maximum potential out of that period, he probably wasn't really resting, he was probably training really hard, it could be something that he hasn't been doing before, maybe he was just taking a break after the show, and now he's 305 pounds, shredded, not really shredded, but lean, right? I don't know how much of that is water and how much is fat, but I think he's gonna be better at the Arnold Classic, bigger. I don't know how well will he peak, he was probably better at Indy than he was at the New York, but it was a slight difference, so we'll see what he looks like at the New York Pro stage, but it is an awesome addition, I'm really happy to see these bodybuilders coming and doing the show, and I want to see all of them, more, more, more bodybuilders compete. Because, yeah, top 5 is qualified, they don't have to compete again, but uh, some of them are doing that. For example, William Bonek. William Bonek is also gonna be doing Arnold Classic, and he is one of the favorites to win the show. So, William Bonek was 5th at the Olympia, which means he has an automatic qualification. Every year so far, for quite a few years, he has been doing Arnold Classic. This year, it was moved from March to... September, and that's why he would usually simply not really have an off-season, he would just uh, go from show to show, you know, back to back and just compete, every, every opportunity he can get to earn more money, however, this year the Arnold was cancelled, so he took an off-season. What was he doing in the off-season? Was he trying to progress? No, he just took some break, you know, he took some rest. He wasn't really training super hard, he wasn't on gear, he wasn't eating, he wasn't pushing himself in that regard as well, and he rested his body, and now he will probably gonna be more fresh uh, at this prep for the Arnold Classic, and hopefully better, because last year the Arnold at the Mr. Olympia, sorry, he wasn't really at his best, so hopefully he will improve. Now, this is the most recent physique update, and lately he has been posting a lot of those, and every single one was more impressive than the previous one, because he started using gear and really training hard again, I mean, after taking a break. I thought he was done at one point, I thought he was retired, but no, he came back. Now, looking at this photo, like, there is a lot of density in this back, he's known for that. His back is so, so thick, it's crazy. It's not very wide, though, it's pretty narrow. It's not really a big surface, but this surface that he has, he filled it up maximally. And it simply can't be ignored on the stage. It can be beaten by somebody who is wider, and at least has similar, or their thickness needs to be at least close to this thickness. That way you can beat Bonek in the back double bicep. For example, Phil Heat is also very, very thick, not this thick probably, close, but a little bit wider, still. Phil is also narrow, but he is not as narrow as Bonek. So he was better than him in this pose. But Bonek was better than, for example, Big Remy. Even though Big Remy is much wider, he just doesn't have this development, this thickness, these lower lats. So, as you can see, it's a very, very thick back, but it seems like there is a bad case of asymmetry. A left lat looks much, much smaller than the right one. It could be the angle, it's probably the angle and the lighting, the shadow, the way it falls. It could be that he didn't really flex properly, probably it's not that, it's probably just the angle and the shadow. But if that's not the case, then it's gonna be bad on the stage for him, because 
at least in this photo, there is a significant, very significant difference, big asymmetry between his uh, right and left side of his back. So I really hope it's just the photo, because last time one of his legs was smaller than the other one. And now if it's a problem with the back, that's, that's too much, it's gonna knock him a few places down. So let's hope this is just the angle and the shadow. I don't know, it could be. What do you guys think? Tell me down below. But nonetheless, the back looks really thick, he looks very dry. And even still, he has a good chance of winning or at least cracking like the top three. I think the two biggest threats to him are gonna be Rolly Winkler and probably Nick Walker, actually. Honestly, I think Nick Walker is that impressive at this point. But that's a bit of a bold statement, we still need to see him compared to the other guys. As for now, William Bonek, he was able to beat Rolly before. If Rolly comes off, Bonek could do it. Let's just see what is going on with his lat, but other than that, he looks massive, he looks thick, he looks shredded, and overall, he looks good. Well, it's been a while since we saw this guy on the stage, Steve Kuklo. I think the last time was 2020 Arnold Classic, so it's gonna be almost two years since we saw him on the stage. We'll see what he's gonna look like uh, uh, on this stage again, so he's doing Texas Pro, and uh, at this point he does look pretty massive, and this guy, you cannot really tell how big he is uh, until he steps on the stage, because he's very tall. As you can see, his weight right here is almost 300 pounds, and he's six and a half weeks out, and he looks pretty shredded at this point. So you still have to wait and see him on stage, this is not the kind of bodybuilder that looks impressive, in the gym, I mean, he does look very impressive, but not as impressive, because he dwarfs a lot of people on the stage. As you can see right here, he was able to absolutely dwarf William Bonek, him and Big Ramy too, but it didn't help, it didn't help. William Bonek beat both of them, he won the show, and I don't think the only reason for that is that Steve doesn't have a lot of muscle on his frame, I think he has a lot of muscle for his frame, that is very big frame, but he doesn't have deep details, like, he, his body, I mean, there is no striation anywhere, really, the legs, the back, nothing, really, he doesn't have any separation, I think that's just genetic, but he is very big, don't get me wrong. Obviously, though, both of these guys look uh, pretty horrible in this pose, this is not a pose for big bodybuilders, when a bodybuilder is big and can pull a good abs and thighs, that, that's really rare, that's rare. Sean Rosen, for example, and uh, right off the bat, I can't really think of many other examples. I wouldn't say Big Ramy's absent eyes is very good. I don't think so. So it's very rare, and yeah, both of these guys look pretty bad here. Most muscular, however, is a different story. It is a pose for big bodybuilders. And as you can see right here, why am I showing this to you? Two reasons. First of all, when you compare William Bonek here to the other guys, he's smaller but he has an insane amount of muscle on his frame. I mean, look at his delts. Is there any more room for growth? No. Arms? No. Chest? No. I mean, legs, if they were bigger, they would look odd. He is packed to the max. Also, the same thing with back. I mean, as much as his structure allows, that's how much muscle he has. He's packed. He, he, he's full, like, uh, to the gills. Like, there is no more room for growth. So, as you can see, he's not as tall and as wide and as big as the other guys, but he can still beat them, even in the muscularity point, because he has so much muscle for his frame. And another reason why I'm showing you all these photos is just because a lot of people forget about Steve Kuklo and don't really consider him as one of the top bodybuilders, and he is, he is, but he's just not very much outspoken. And now I'm showing you all these photos, you can see he's definitely comparable to the other top, top guys. So let's wait and see what he's gonna look like at this Texas Pro. He's probably gonna win it. I don't know who else is doing it. Are there any other top, top big names? But he has a good chance of winning that show and qualifying for the Mr. Olympia. Charles Griffin, who is about 3-4 weeks out of Chicago Pro, isn't hiding anything away. This is not at 3-4 weeks out. This is at 42 days out. And here he was in a good condition, for sure. So... Conditioning, it's not gonna be a problem for him, unless he messes it up in the like, last week, but I don't think that's gonna happen. As far as muscularity, if you talk about the upper body, there is no mistake, I mean, he is absolutely insane. <laughs> Look at this chunk of meat here. Like, his arms, his back, he's just so packed, so thick. He's a shorter guy, and for his frame, similar thing like William Bonek, but with much worse legs. If he had better legs, it would be a different story, but his legs are just not as big as his upper body. 
And when he stands next to Hunter Labrada, that's gonna be revealed. That's gonna be really revealed because Hunter has amazing legs. Does Hunter have this kind of fullness and 3D that uh, Charles has? Probably not to this level, but uh, Hunter is definitely way more balanced and he has smaller waist. Charles has a little bit thicker waist. So I think Charles is battling for the second spot. I don't think he, he actually has a chance of winning this show. I mean, he's a great bodybuilder and all, but against Hunter Labrada, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, but what he probably has better than Hunter is arms. I mean, he has really amazing arms and uh, Hunter has great arms as well. I mean, he's not lacking in that department at all. But these arms are just something special, especially the biceps. And he hasn't been training arms directly ever, basically. He hasn't been doing that for a while, at least. He said that. And now in this offseason he trained arms. Because he wanted to make them look freakier, and he did that. Look at the biceps. Really, really crazy looking biceps. And yeah, again, I'm thinking he's gonna be second at the Chicago Pro. As freaky as he looks, I don't see him beating Hunter, no. Jeremy Buendia, man's physique, Mr. Olympia champion, quite a few times. Four or five times, something like that. And is it gonna be a future classic physique competitor? I really do hope so, because lately he has been posting a lot of bodybuilding poses. And he has been getting thicker and thicker and bigger. And as you can see right here, he does not look small at all. This was him when he started the transformation. He was definitely way, way smaller, much skinnier. Look at the chest. It's basically non-existent. He looks like a regular Filipino. He doesn't look like a bodybuilder, like somebody who is a Mr. Olympia in any division, really. So he lost a lot of size, a lot of size. He had an injury, I think he had a surgery or something like that. And he lost a lot of size, he was much, much smaller, he looked pretty skinny at this point, but now? Skinny is definitely not the word I would use to describe his physique, I would rather go with the word thick. So he has a lot of muscle, and uh, I hope he's gonna actually transfer to classic physique. I don't know how well would he do over there, but I think he wants that, because he was firstly a bodybuilder, he competed in the bodybuilding division before there was classic. He didn't really do too well, but he wanted it, like he wanted to be a bodybuilder, and then man's physique came up, so he decided to do that, because he was suited for that. And now there is classic physique. And he, I'm sure he really wants to step on that stage in classic physique, and I don't think he said anything, uh, like, officially, but I believe we're gonna see him on classic physique stage. Just wait, guys, just wait for the announcement. I believe he's gonna announce it, and if he does classic physique, I think he can do very, very well. If he preps as hard as he used to prep for man's physique, if he gives it all of his, he can do really well. I, I think so, I believe so. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. And we have another future classic physique competitor, former men's physique competitor, and another Jeremy as well. <laughs> Jeremy Potvin, you can see him right here, posing, practicing his classic physique poses. And from what I can see right here, I think he had a wedding recently, he got married, so he probably let go of himself a little bit, he probably wasn't training for a while, relaxed a little, and I don't think this is him at his best, at his uh, full-blown, but he looks good, nonetheless. What I would like to add to say is that he needs to learn how to pose with his legs. Like that's 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 a big issue here, and I think that's gonna be fixed as soon as somebody shows it to him in the front and the side poses. He has no idea what to do with his legs. He can't really flex them properly without uh, expanding too much energy. It's all about the foot placement. He will learn that. Somebody will show it to him. Uh, here he's not showing any hamstrings, for example, or quads. He simply doesn't know how to pose with his legs, because he's a man physique competitor, he never competed as a bodybuilder, he doesn't know, somebody has to show it to him. But overall, he looks pretty good in all these poses. I mean, that's a good wee taper, the waist looks really small, especially considering this is, this is off-season. The legs don't look as small as, as the posing is bad. Once he learns how to pose with those legs, and once he grows them a little bit more, it's gonna look just much, much better. Upper body, it's pretty much there. I mean, all the mass that he really needs, is it's all in the legs. It's all in the legs. And upstairs, just a little bit more refinement. And uh, I would like to see a good deep vacuum as well. And overall, he looks great for classic physique. We'll see. Uh, I don't know when he's gonna compete, what is gonna be his classic physique debut, but once he does that, I'm sure it's gonna be pretty good. I think he has a good genetic structure for classic physique. So as soon as he competes, we'll see. We'll see what, what kind of potential he actually has. 
Whatever you guys think, tell me down below, like this video if you enjoyed it, and if you want to see more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to this channel. All the best guys and bye bye.